Hello my soccer universe, Friday evening, finally the Euros get underway, which means time for me to get back uh, talking about games, looking really forward to. Uh, in this video we will talk of course about the entire tournament, look at the host cities, we will look at the predictions for the tournament according to my model, but I also want to go through it a little bit group by group while we look at these predictions and tell you what I think about each of the groups, so a little bit more of a personalized view, because, you know, the ratings are not always correct, because they don't take certain things into account, but generally, I would say they are correct. As always, the Euros are a very, very open tournament. The last few times that we watched it, there was not one of the top two or three favorites winning it. We said, of course, with Portugal, we saw it with Italy. None of them were considered among the top favorites ahead of the tournament. The last top favorite that actually won was Spain. And I would say Spain twice. But then before that, we had Greece. France were a top favorite. Germany were a top favorite and Denmark. The Netherlands were actually in 88, very unfancied. So you see there's a trend. The Euros kind of either won so a favorite wins. But it can also be that a not so fancy team wins and it can also be a non big team. However, I think in this year's we'll get at least an established name that will win. Here in Austria, while the trust in Ralf Rangnick's team is quite high, the expectations are maybe not as big, which in Austria is a good thing because, you know, whenever you have high expectations, there's only one way you can go and that's down. So then a little bit more level, I'm actually not unhappy about that, but I would expect them to move on to the next round, even though it's a tough group. But let's start this video by looking at the host cities and you see here 10 cities all over Germany. Although I kind of concentrated a little bit into this western corner in North Rhein-Westfalen, NRW if you would like, which I think is maybe the one thing that I could a little bit criticize them for to not spread out the venues a little bit more evenly. Nine of these venues also were venues for the World Cup last time around. Let's run quickly through the cities. Of course, the big one is Berlin, the capital city with the Olympia Stadion that will host the final and is probably a main venue, also a main venue for Austria. Austria is not only training close to the Olympia Stadion, they're playing two of the group games at the Olympia Stadion. So it's kind of a home venue for them, even though the Dutch and the Polish will bring a whole lot of fans. Then we have Cologne, the fourth largest city in Germany, known for its impressive cathedral. The stadium is a little bit further on the outside. It's actually quite a nice footballing stadium, but I always feel that it's could be a little bit bigger, but then FC Köln is maybe not the biggest team at the moment in Germany, although historically they definitely are. Dortmund, of course Dortmund need to be in there. Dortmund itself is maybe not the city that everyone wants to visit, because the main attraction, Dortmund, for most people is the Westfalen Stadion, but it's the most impressive stadium in Germany. It will host a semi-final, it will host quite a few interesting matches uh, at these Euros as well, so definitely one that uh, needs to be included. Düsseldorf was always kind of an they have a really very modern arena, so um, it's great to see them there. Austria played their first game in Dusseldorf against uh, France. It's just that they're so close to other big venues and big cities that they're always a little bit overlooked. One of the more overlooked towns in Germany. But overall, I think it's the right time. They should probably have hosted World Cup matches as well. Then Frankfurt has to be in there. The Waldstadion is just the main feature. Frankfurt is a main transport hub also very much in there. It's also the financial capital of of Europe. We have then Gelsenkirchen, which honestly, yes, I understand. Schalke, big club with an impressive stadium and a stadium that probably deserves to be in such a big tournament. However, given that we have Dusseldorf, Cologne and Dortmund already in there, for me, they were always kind of a little bit outside Canada. Gelsenkirchen itself, not a city that you need to necessarily visit. I would say, you know, it's a lot of coal, coal mining, which already is gone. Then we have Hamburg, another must-see, second largest city in Germany, the big harbor town up front. They will, of course, host the games in the Volksparkstadion that was built for the last World Cup, HSV being, of course, the main tenant. Uh, there will be quite a few interesting games in there as well. I think only a quarterfinal this time around. Leipzig uh, will host, like Cologne, I think only four games. and There's only one uh, knockout uh, game in the round of 16. It's one of the craziest stadiums in it because it was built 
built within the old stadium, which was the largest in Europe. Leipzig itself is quite an interesting, quite a historic town, well worth your visit as well. And then the two southern ones, Munich, of course Munich, it hosts the opener, there's a semi-final in there, it's the stadium of Bayern Munich now, it's one of the biggest stadiums in Germany and finally Bayern have a proper home arena, you know, I still remember the times from the old Olympia Stadion. And of course we have Stuttgart, the other big capital in, in the south, not necessarily a pretty city because of all the war damage that has been done, but one of the most livable, if not the most livable city in Germany and a really nice stadium that has been rebuilt many, 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 many times. Uh, I thought that when they had removed the athletics track a little bit over 10 years ago that this was it. No, for these years they completely rebuilt another stand. So that's one of the most uh, remodeled stadiums in all of Germany. So with the host venues out of the way, let's look at the favorites. According to, as I said, a combination of the bookmakers odds where I aggregated over a whole host of them. I took the ELO rating, I took the FIFA rating and I combined them into one rating similar to the tournament and you get it. And yes, bookmakers favor England. However, odds for England are always overvalued because many people bet on England. So I think France being the favorite is actually not so unreasonable. You see England, Spain, Portugal, potentially Belgium and Germany in there. And there's a little home field advantage for Germany in there as well. Germany is definitely suffering from the ELO and the FIFA rating where they are not riding high. While Italy have a similar chance to Germany of winning, I honestly, I would not consider personally Italy among the top favorites, even though they are defending champions. But they're in a similar position as they were just three year, years ago. I think Italy, Netherlands, Croatia, are dangerous outside the next category of Denmark, Ukraine, Switzerland, Austria, Turkey, Hungary, Serbia. Do we want to cut it there or do we include Scotland as well? I don't think a Poland, Czech Republic and Slovakia will do anything. Scotland uh, need to get out of the group for the first time ever. And as I said, Austria is probably riding that low because they have a really, really tough group. You see they have only a 55% chance of advancing, which beside Poland who are in the same group is the lowest that we see in the R16 column here. But this is the overall picture ahead of the Euros. I um, collected the data just I think two days ago. Now let's look at the groups. Groups A has of course a big favorite in Germany. They're the host nation but you see already the other three are relatively close together. It is still Switzerland ahead of Hungary ahead of Scotland which is probably the reasonable way of looking at it. However I think that Hungary will probably finish in second lands for third place between Switzerland and Scotland and I actually think that the Swiss are more on the down where Scotland I think on their day they can surprise anybody. So I actually am riding a little bit low on the Swiss. There's also a little bit discontent in their camp. Group B would be the group of death if there wasn't Albania in there but I think it's exactly Albania that's the wild card here. I am sure that Spain will go through. I have no idea what to think about Croatia. It's an aging team but they also bring in some young talent and Croatia at big tournaments can always do something. Italy defending champions and they have the name but Italy is one of those teams where I really have no idea what to think, think of them. I think they are a very shaky opponent. If Spalletti gets the side together. I think they can be an amazing side to watch, like we had it at the, at the beginning of the last Euros. However, if the side is not gelling, I can see also a group stage exit. And then there's Albania, a team that won the qualifying group ahead of the Czech Republic and Poland, a team that plays actually quite offensively. And I think a team that can cause some trouble, especially against Italy, where there's a lot of connections. You know, uh, many Albanians play in Serie A, so there's a lot of familiarity. I get a little bit France with Senegal, vibes from 2002 for this matchup and that could go a long way. I think one of the teams on top will lose points to Albania. I don't think Albania will go out with zero points and I think they're a dangerous side to watch. In Group C, yes, big favorite England. England is one of the most fancy sides, although I have some doubts about their back line to be honest, but going forward they're of course amazing. Now the question is will, for instance, the likes of Jude Bellingham after a long season be up to fitness or does Southgate need to jig up the first lineup a little bit? Behind them, yes, Denmark on paper is probably the strongest one but I don't trust this Denmark side. I think they're on the end of a cycle. We already saw that the last World Cup it might well be that they're not gonna make it out of this group. Serbia is a dangerous team but you know Serbia you never know what you get from them. I actually have my eyes on Slovenia. Slovenia finished level on points in qualifying with Denmark. Have some exciting young talent in there as well. You know Šeško then you have Oblak in goal. This is a side that also might surprise. I think we always have to look a little bit at the outsiders. 
Group D. France have to be considered the favorites. Netherlands, of course, just by their squad quality and where these players are playing, should be second ahead of Austria and then ahead of Poland. And Poland have actually a really good record against Austria. I think France will win this group. I really think that Austria have a good chance to finish second in this one. This is not a vintage Netherlands. And Ronald Koeman, as great as a player as he was, as a coach, he's always disappointed with Netherlands side, while usually beating the teams that they have to beat against teams that they are clearly weaker, they will always lose. And then against the other opponents, I'm not sure if this high pressing style of Austria will be in their favor. Poland is probably the one that I'm a little bit more wary about because Poland, unlike the France and Netherlands, will probably like to sit deep and then the pressing style will, might not work as well. Have Lewandowski is already missing the first game. So we'll see about that. I think that this group will end France, Austria, Netherlands. But you know, it can go either way. I think France will win it. And then behind them, almost any combination, although Poland to me seem like a little bit like Denmark, a little bit too aged, although they have some excellent players in there. The question is, how do they perform as a team? Group E, I think Belgium, Ukraine. Those are the two. I mean, Belgium, yes, Courtois is not, not there, but I think Belgium will romp through this group and will then actually have a very favorable position go up until the quarterfinal, as, as we've seen. The Ukraine should be clearly the second best team in there. It's between Romania and Slovakia who will finish third and have a chance of moving on. I would give it more to Romania than Slovakia. I, I don't fancy Slovakia all that much. And then Group F looks a little bit blah at first look. However, Portugal have the potential to be one of the most exciting sides in the entire tournament very offensively gifted let's put it this way i always think they would be better if they didn't have ronaldo in there but hey he's there he's scoring goals let's see where this goes turkey another side a little bit like serbia they can be awesome on one day and they can be completely disappointing like they were the last years where everyone said turkey is gonna go far we still can say this here the czechs are very solid team nothing exciting and then there's georgia in there that will add a little bit of spice however when i look at the qualifying record of georgia they never finished hard and in any qualification round, which tells me they might be a little bit outmatched. Although with Kvitscha, Kvall, they have probably one of the most exciting talents in this group in there as well. So let's see if he can play. This will be a solid performance. I think they will get a point from somewhere. The question is from where they will get it. Now, if you rank the third place teams, you can already guess where are the tough groups in there. Croatia wins that rating because they are relatively level with Italy and are very much ahead of Albania. So they have a little bit more points secured. The Czechs also, Hungary and Serbia ahead of Romania and Austria. Austria, of course, because of the tough group. I still think even if Austria would finish third, that they will make it through. However, my model does not support that one and it actually was good to temper also my expectations we have the following bracket you know this is the one if it's all chalk we would have spain hungary germany denmark so we would have a germany against spain quarterfinal which very much seems to me like the 2006 argentina germany quarter final that could make or break the tournament for germany because i would assume that they will beat denmark relatively easy also spain will struggle against hungary spain will struggle with goals but they should move on of course spain are higher rated so they would move on to the semi-final according to the model then portugal serbia what a great revenge matchup remember serbia beating portugal in the last match they have qualifying to qualify for qatar and portugal had to go through the playoffs that would be a great revenge matchup if you would like and netherlands Ukraine should be a win for the Netherlands but you see already if I put Austria there I actually like Austria's chances I would expect Portugal to get out of it I'm, re I'm riding relatively high on Port Portugal for this we have Belgium and Croatia that was all something yes groups such as the World Cup I think this time Belgium might actually beat Croatia but again this is a Croatia side that you never know what you're gonna get they can go really far they go out in, in the group stage it's typically Balkan teams France Turkey sounds easier than it probably will be because Turkey in I think it was in World Cup qualifying where Turkey actually gave France a little bit of trouble and then on the bottom England Czech Republic should be easy for England Switzerland Italy if Switzerland move on and play Italy I would expect Italy to beat them but there is history there definitely but we all want to see the rematch of the 21 final so we have the quarterfinals or we say spain move on uh, portugal will move on over the netherlands belgium against france big one However, i cannot see anyone else but france winning then england against italy yeah that is an interesting one having qualifying england very comfortably disposed of it italy so it was italy moving on and we have france against england and spain against portugal which would be two great semi-finals 
just by the look look of it where Spain and France will prevail and France of course are the favorites not sure if it will happen this way I don't think that France will win it okay kiss of death they are one and the second one is I'm really riding high on Portugal I really like what this Portugal side is doing kiss of death too if you would like I fear that Germany will get on on a roll and will make it to the final in Berlin however finals at home in the UEFA have frequently been lost by the home team so also have that in mind first set of matches we have here Germany and Scotland kick it off on Friday then we have a very interesting Saturday Hungary Switzerland might not be the greatest game to watch I think Spain Croatia is uh, the one that really sticks out but Italy Albania is the one that I have earmarked in, in a way and on Sunday Poland Netherlands of course some personal interest there and then England Serbia definitely an interesting one Monday the big one to me is Austria France and then watch Turkey against Georgia and I want to see what Portugal can do against the Czech Republic public now how am i planning to cover this tournament i will try my best after every match to record a little short video that's the bare minimum i also want to do daily review videos but they will not happen after the matches they have to happen in the morning and so if i see that i will not get a review video done in time to post let's say at 10 a.m or at least it's 11 a.m here in europe I'm not sure if I should go through the trouble. I will try to do it daily, but if it doesn't work out, you know, I will tag it on to uh, a video that is a day later. In any case, please let me know who is your favorite to win the Euros. As I said, at the moment, everyone says France or England, and I have a feeling that neither of these will win it. And I don't think Spain will win it either. So the top three for me are already out, but I couldn't tell you who it is. I would say someone between Portugal and Germany. E. Let's see. Any case, give a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.